Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be showing you how to um, repair the piece behind the fender, the front fender, you know, where the heater channel welds to, kind of like, it's behind the fender, but the heater channel welds to it. It rusts out a lot on northeastern cars and stuff. Cars that rust out, they rust out a lot. So then I'm going to be showing you how to do that. And uh, yeah, let's get started with the Beatles that way. So I'll go there and... Alright guys, so we're at the car and this can see it's very bad on this car right here is gone this is gone this is gone over here too so I got this repair piece from M&T manufacturing in Rhode Island link in the description it was about $20 plus shipping I think it might have been $20 including shipping it was a really good deal and you can see it goes up to here but the key with repair panels is you only use what you need so since the rust really stops here this is just from a bad welding job right here I'm only gonna cut it to there and I probably have to cut this too right here because this is gonna get in the way but yeah, so we'll get welding. Well, I'll start prepping this, then we'll get welding. All right guys, so I have cut out most of what I'm going to be replacing. Over here, right here, I'm going to have to weld a little bit because when I was cutting from the firewall, it removed it. And I just wanna show you down here, this is called the black hole in a Volkswagen. Up top in the trunk, right around here, there's just a pit and stuff falls down and it falls to here and you really can't get it and now look what is that that is some kind of what's it called you know it takes bolts off it's one of those I don't know what it's from I'll keep it though anything else in there I can't really see but I'll do a little looking just want to show you that so yeah. All right guys, so as you can see, I've cut this all squarer than it was before. So now I'm going to take this panel and put it up to it. Now I personally, doing this, oh, oh, yep, there's that. I'm going to, I'm going to try and match up this profile and then have this hook on because that well, um, pretty much me now have a good fit. So, yeah, I'm gonna do that and let the camera roll. So, the piece I've been using is the piece that I got from the, the uh, replacement panel company. It's too big for this, and just even for fitting, it's too big. So I think I'm going to cut it down and refit again and then start welding it in place. Yep, so I'm going to cut it down, fit it, and um, weld it in. Um, if you can't tell, it's a new day. Um, here in Connecticut, it's getting dark around 4.30, 5 o'clock-ish. So that doesn't leave me much time to really work on the car. But, so, this video is going to be multiple clips of me doing the same thing throughout well put together so that it's like one video tutorial so this is where I've left off this is the repair piece it is freezing because it's been outside for a day or two but and this is my um the place where I've cut the old one from so I'm going to start fitting now these these repair pieces are very notably known for being absolutely terrible and you can tell just from this the profile is completely different than what it actually is so I've got to tweak it and change things and it's really awful but it's what you do if you love these cars like me so see over here I've got to do that 
to try to get that to line up. As we get into the most important part of this repair, which is going to be the welding, of course, right along here with the uh, repair panel, I would like to point out that prep work is the most important part of this. So right here, as you can see, it's all undercoating from the Volkswagen, um, the dealership. That needs to come off. And so does the black paint on the repair panel. That isn't a primer. That is a, um, protective coating they set on it from the uh, factory. It does nothing except get in the way of your welds. So you're going to want to take this, this is your grinder, and put a wire wheel on it. They also make these for drills. I prefer the drill ones. It's a little smaller, a little more easy to handle, stuff like that, but I lost that. So this is what I have. So I'm going to do it here and do it on the repair piece. And you'll definitely have to do some fitting with the repair piece. Um, extra metal needs to be ground down, stuff like that. But uh, yeah, so I'll do that. I'll grind a little, stop the tape, film, whatever you want to call it. And um, then get to welding and show you guys that. Now, if it doesn't seem like it's working, which it kind of is, you could always switch to a flapper disc. That will definitely get the paint off, but I'll keep going with this right now. So, yeah. Oh, God. You might ruin your pants doing this. Just so you know. Wear jeans. Or rent a Tyvek suit or something. Don't do what I do in terms of safety. That's not working, so I'm going to switch to the flapper disc, and, um, yeah, I'm not going to film that, because you get the idea from using this. Top tip for you all, when, um, putting something onto your, um, grinder, you only have to tighten the, um, whatever you want to call this, hand tight, because the motion of the, the grinder spinning will tighten it all the way, so if you can do, take it off and stuff, by hand, but it's hand tight, you're all good. Don't have to use your uh, vice grips or the tool that it's supposed to come with. So now I have all the paint ground off of this piece and the uh, repair piece. I would like to say a tip would be to, if your car was undercoated, get it all off before you even start doing something like this. Either Sandblast, Media Blast. Um, I hear using a um, like one of those torches, the uh, with like the butane, I think, and a scraper gets it off really well, or any heat, because it makes a awful mess. You can just tell. I don't, I don't think you can see, like right here, my hand just covered in it. Yeah. So now I will start getting prepped for welding. Okay, so here we are. I've got the panel fitted. I really need to get some magnets instead of duct tape, but it's what I've got, so I'll start welding after I plug the welder in. Now, you want to make sure you've got the right settings and you got this in a place where there's bare metal. You don't want it on any paint or anything because it will not work as well. Let's get started. Mask. Can't forget the welding mask. And something's wrong, as usual. All right, so I've got it tacked on, and you can kind of see that the welds are awful, first of all, and that there's this gap here. Now, it's not bad. It doesn't need to be filled with metal, but you will want to get yourself this piece of copper. That's another tip. If you have a gap here, or like a gap between any welds, or you make a hole, you burn a hole, you get a uh, legitimate copper, not copper-plated, but solid copper like a 
pipe connector or something from the hardware store and flatten it out, it's a, um, the weld won't stick to it very well, so it'll fill in the uh, hole. That's just a top tip. And you can see that the copper helps make a, a bond there for the, uh, the weld. So you can just, ugh, this mask. You can just do that for um, a lot of it. So I'm not going to film the welding as usual because I don't know what it's going to do to the camera. But um, I'll show you the after product when I finish welding. All right, so here's the um, like three quarters of the way done. I'll have to make a follow-up video of me finishing it. You can see the welds are absolutely terrible, but that's the way it goes. Um, I'll have to tune the welder, but you can get it the idea. You tack in multiple places, then do a series of stitch welds along the top to get it together. This. Mm, I should have welded the back of that more, but I can weld the front, I guess. But, yeah. Thank you guys so much for watching t um, this video. Um, there will definitely be a follow-up with me um, showing you what it looks like completed. Um, also, make sure to, um, if you like the video, like it. Comment. If you are interested in things more like this repair, make sure to subscribe because there will be many more tutorials like it. And um, also, right now on Teespring for however long I leave them up there, there's um, going to be sweatshirts and t-shirts with this logo on it that says Dubworks in the shape of a beetle. Um, on the back, they say 0-60 to 60 by next year's model. There might be a few more sayings as the, um, they progress, but if you want one, make sure to check out the links in the description below. So, goodbye!